Hello and bonjour. It is December the 31st, 2021. It is an absolutely gorgeous last day of the year and I'm in the middle of a field somewhere in France. Now, admittedly, this is hardly the first time I've brought you all to a random field. Um, but as usual, this is not just any old field. And more to the point, this is not just any old road. In 1950, this was the site of the first Formula One World Championship French Grand Prix. And if you don't believe me, take a look at this. Welcome to the abandoned 1950 Grand Prix circuit of Reims Gueux. This is the former start and finish straight of the historic racing circuit of Reims Gueux. And before we start, let's address it. Yes, Reims, I know. And yes, Gueux. No, I don't know how France thinks that Gueux is an acceptable name for a place. That's just an involuntary noise. And even if it was acceptable, any English speaking toddler will tell you that you could have spelt it with one letter. Gueux. How on earth do you need five? Ah, oh, yes, fair enough. Anyway, back to the video. The French Grand Prix was held here 11 times in the 50s and 60s, and legendary drivers like Jack Brabham, Jim Clark and Juan Manuel Fangio all won races here. But unfortunately, safety regulations eventually caught up with it, and the owners didn't have the money to make the necessary changes. The 1966 race was the last time it hosted Formula One, and the track closed down completely in 1972. So hang on, you're telling me this is the actual 1950 French Grand Prix circuit, just left abandoned in the middle of a field, with a big sign on the outside saying free entrance? This is like Christmas... Oh wait, it actually was. <laughs> the official toilets of the 1950 French Grand Prix. Everything here seems to have been frozen in time since the day after that last race in 66. But how does such a magical place even exist anymore? Nearly everything else from those early years of Formula One has disappeared. The surviving historic venues like Silverstone, Monza or Spa have all been heavily modified and rebuilt to fit modern standards, while the lost venues like the Swiss track at Bremgarten or the other French track at Rouen were simply abandoned, and sooner or later all the old grandstands and pit garages were flattened for redevelopment. How did Reims Gueux escape demolition itself? Well, it very nearly didn't. And to explain that, here's a French man I bumped into. This is Monsieur Hervé Travigny, who turns out to be the president of the association that owns the circuit. And he tells me what happened after that last race. Un groupement d'industriels rémois qui avait dans son dans le contrat devait tout démonter parce qu'il y a des, des tonnes et des tonnes de béton et ces gens-là ne l'ont pas fait heureusement pour nous parce que l'on serait pas là ah oui <rire> c'est sûr donc mais par contre le circuit est resté une trentaine d'années à l'abandon complet 
And after 30 years of neglect, that's where the association steps in. They're called the Friends of the Circuit of Gu, and they're a group of volunteer enthusiasts who helped save the site from demolition and are responsible for some incredible work restoring the architecture to its glory days of the 50s and 60s. And that work is ongoing. Here's what the same building looked like two years ago when the YouTube channel WTF1 came here. But as Monsieur Travigny explains, the circuit goes back even further. The first Grand Prix to be held here was in 1926, and parts of the grandstand were built only two years after that. But just to clear up some pedantry on this, that's before the creation of Formula One as a racing category. So the first Formula One Grand Prix is in 1948, but that's before the creation of the World Drivers' Championship. So the first Formula One World Championship Grand Prix is in 1950, I hope you're all still here. The point being, this is one of the seven tracks that made up the first ever competitive season of Formula One, and we were very close to losing it. Oui, ça failli être démoli parce qu'en fin de compte, ce n'était plus qu'un qu tas, euh, tas de béton. Ah oui, quand même. C'est comme ça. Comme ça. This particular building was a kind of exhibition pavilion where brands and sponsors could rent out one of the eight little showrooms for the week of the race. But one bit of the site I haven't shown you is inside the old grandstands themselves. And that's because, unfortunately, they're not fully safe. The gates are kept closed and visitors aren't usually allowed to go in there. Not usually. Right, they don't normally give access to this bit, which is why uh, those gates are shut. But I've had a little word with someone important and um, they let me in. I have to be honest, it really is quite special to sit in this 1920s grandstand and watch the cars still speeding past in the 2020s, even if it is a family hatchback on a shopping trip. But this is the same spot where thousands of people would have watched Fangio, Brabham, Clark, Hawthorne standing on the podium after winning the French Grand Prix. And of course, it wouldn't really be a visit to an abandoned building without finding the entrance to some dodgy looking tunnel underneath it and going down to explore. See anything down there. It appears to be some sort of dungeon. Yeah. Hell is that? <laughs> okay. Is it? Oh, I think it's it is just a tunnel to the side. Right? It must be like the old service tunnel or something. Whoop, it's quite slippery underneath. So I assume now, I think now on the other side, other side of the road, and we are underneath the other stand, but um, <laughs> I can't get out. So I'm gonna have to go back. I did a bit more research when I got home and it turns out this was the pedestrian underpass for spectators crossing to the other side of the track. And let's face it, this is a good example of why the whole place needed to be upgraded or shut down. It wasn't just the track that was dangerous. You don't need me to tell you why sending crowds of excited people through a tunnel barely wide enough for two isn't the best idea. It feels more like a secret wartime bunker where members of La Résistance would have hidden from the Gestapo. Possibly because that's exactly what happened in 1944. And going back to the track itself, I'm not going to take you around the whole circuit today because it was 8 kilometers long and I didn't bring a vehicle with me, but there are videos online if you want to see that. Unfortunately you can't quite do a full lap anymore, but most of the circuit's still there and it's all public roads that you can drive down. And on that note, if you'd like to visit Hansku, the best way to get here is in a car, even I will admit that. There isn't really any public transport. You could get the number one bus from the centre of Reims to the edge of town retail park and then walk the rest of the way, but only a total idiot would do that. The circuit is of course completely free to visit and if you'd like to support the work the association's doing, you can make a donation or become a member. I'll link the website in the description. Obviously, bear in mind though, these are still abandoned buildings, so exploring is not 100% safe and unfortunately they were not built with accessibility in mind. But even if you don't go in the buildings, it's still worth dropping by just for what you can see from street level. And that's it for today. A big merci to Hervé and Jean-Francois from the association for all their help. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon.